Hello students. In the last session, we have started with the chapter Separation of Substances. We have studied the different methods by which we can separate the substances from the mixture. Do you remember what were the methods that we studied? The first method that we studied was hand picking method. When is the hand picking method useful in separation of substances? The hand picking method is useful when our mixture contains the larger particle sized component and we can visibly see the difference in the component need to be separated. We have seen the example of black and the green colored grapes in which we have separated the black colored grapes from the green by the hand picking method. We have also seen that the impurities present in wheat, rice or the pulses can also be separated by the hand picking method. Then the second method which we have studied was threshing. When is threshing method useful? The farmers use the threshing method to separate the grains from the stock. Then we have seen winnowing. What is winnowing? Winnowing is used to separate the mixture having the lighter and the heavier components present in it. Then we have seen the method of sieving. What is sieving? In sieving, we use the sieve to separate the mixture. When we pass the mixture in the sea, the particles having a smaller size than the sieve will pass through it and the larger size particle will remain on the sieve. By this way, we can separate the mixture. Then we have seen sedimentation, decantation and filtration. What is sedimentation? When the insoluble solid is mixed in the water, what happens? It will settle at the bottom of the beaker. The substance that settle at the bottom of the beaker is known as a sediment and the liquid above the sediment is known as a supernatant liquid. When we pour this liquid into another beaker, what it is called as? It is called as a decantation. Then we have seen the filtration. Very common example of the filtration that we see in our home is also when we filter the tea. Isn't it? For filtration, we have seen how the apparatus are assembled. For filtration, we need funnel, beaker and the filter paper. We have seen the example of muddy water. What happened when we pass the muddy water? The mud will remain on the filter paper while the liquid or the water will pass through the funnel. By this way, we can separate the mixture. So, we have seen the different methods by which we can separate the substances. So, let's move on to the today's session. Now, the first topic that we are going to study today is evaporation. What do you mean by evaporation? Evaporation is the process of conversion of liquid into its vapor state. Now how do the evaporation method is useful to us in separating the substance? We all know that we get salt from sea water. The salt that we get from the sea water is due to the process of evaporation. What is done? The water is collected in a shallow pit. Under the sunlight, the water get heated up and it will turn into its vapor state. After few days, the water will completely evaporate leaving behind the salt. 
the salt is then further purified by this way we can get salt from the sea water this process is known as evaporation till now we have studied how by using the one method we can separate the substances from the mixture now let us see how more than one method can be useful in separation of substances if i will give you the mixture of sand and salt how you will be able to separate the sand and salt is it possible to use the hand picking method for separation of sand and salt no sand and salt cannot be separated by using the hand picking method so let's see what are the different methods by which we can separate the sand and salt mixture now what we will do is to the sand and salt mixture we will add water what will happen if we will add water in it sand being insoluble in water will settle at the bottom of the beaker so we can separate the sand by the process of decantation or by the filtration isn't it sand will get separated by the decantation or the filtration process now what do the decanted liquid contain we have seen in the sand and salt mixture salt was also present salt being soluble in water will get mixed with the water so the decanted liquid will now contain salt and water now how we, how we will separate the salt from water we will transfer the liquid in the kettle and close its lid we will heat the kettle for some time what will happen if we will heat the kettle the steam will come out from the spout of the kettle now when the steam will come out what you have to do is you have to take a metal plate with some eyes on it we have to hold the metal plate above the spout of the cat kettle what will happen when the steam will come in the contact of the cool metal plate it will condense and forms a liquid water what is condensation when the steam converts into water vapor it is known as a condensation we have also seen what was evaporation when the liquid get transforms into steam it is known as an evaporation so the process of conversion of water vapor into its liquid form is known as condensation so water will start to condense after all the water has evaporated what will be left in the kettle the salt will be left in the kettle by this way we have separated salt and sand mixture so what all the different method we have used in separation decantation or filtration evaporation and condensation method is useful for the separation of sand and salt mixture we have studied that some of the substance get dissolved in the water and forms a solution those substances are known as soluble substances on the other hand if the substance that do not dissolve in the water are known as insoluble substances but for soluble substances can we add any amount of substance in the water what will happen if we go on adding more and more of these substances to a fixed quantity of the water to know this we will perform an activity for which we will need a beaker spoon salt and water 
what we will do is we will pour half a water in a beaker and add one teaspoon of salt and stir it well until salt completely dissolves. We know that salt is soluble in water. So by adding one teaspoonful of salt, it will dissolve in water. Now again we have to add one teaspoon full of salt and stir it well. What will happen this time? This time also the salt will dissolve. Now if we will go on adding two to three spoons of salt, what do you find? Do all the salt will dissolve in the water? No. After adding a few spoons of salt, some of the salt remains undissolved and set it at the bottom of the beaker. Why this happens? This means that no more salt can be dissolved in that given amount of the water. As the solution is now saturated, that means it will not hold any amount of salt that we will add. Now what we will do? We will heat the saturated solution. After heating, the salt will dissolve in water. This means if we will heat a solution, it can dissolve some amount of salt in it. So if we are adding the salt and it is getting dissolved in the water, that means the solution is still unsaturated. It can hold the amount of salt that we are dissolving in it. But if the salt will not dissolve after adding a few teaspoons, that means the solution is saturated. It will not hold any amount of salt that we will add further. We know that some of the substances are soluble in water. For example, salt and sugar both are soluble in water. But do you think water dissolves the equal amount of different soluble substances in it? No. The solubility is different for different substances. For example, if I have a one glass of water and I, it takes 5 teaspoons of salt to make the solution saturated, that doesn't mean I will need the 5 teaspoon of sugar to make the same amount of water saturated. It can even take 3 teaspoon of sugar to make the solution saturated. That means the different substances have a different amount of solubility. I hope all the topics that we have covered in this chapter are understood to you. Now we will discuss some of the exercise questions from our textbook. Let's see the first question. Why do we need to separate the different components of the mixture? Give two example. Why do we need to separate the mixture? As the mixture contains some of the impurities and the non-useful components which may spoil the other components of the mixture. That is why we need to separate the different components of the mixture. We have seen that rice, wheat or pulses may contain stone or the other impurities which need to be separated. What is the next question? What is winnowing? Where is it used? What is winnowing? Winnowing is the separation of heavier particles and the lighter particle component from a mixture by the use of wind or the blowing air. Where it is used? It is used to separate the husk from the grains. Are you getting? Let's see the third question. 
how will you separate the husk or the dirt particles from a given sample of the pulses before cooking how we will separate the husk or the dirt particles by the hand picking method we can separate husk or the dirt particles from a given sample of the pulses before cooking let us see the fourth question what is sieving where is it used what is sieving sieving is the method of separation of the substances having different particle size using a sieve what the sieve will do the sieve will allow the finer particles to pass through it and the particles having a bigger size will be retained on the sieve where it is used it is used in the flour mill to separate the husk or the stones which are present in the wheat before grinding next question is how will you separate sand and water from their mixture how we will separate the sand and water we can separate the sand and water by the decantation or the filtration method let's see the sixth question it is it possible to separate the sugar mixed with wheat flour if yes how will you do it can we separate the sugar that is mixed with the wheat flour yes we can separate it how we can do this in the wheat and the sugar mixture we will add some water what will be soluble in water wheat flour or sugar sugar will be soluble in water and the wheat flour will be insoluble so what will happen wheat flour will settle down and the sugar will get mixed in the water now by the filtration we will transfer this mixture into a funnel the wheat will accumulate the wheat flour will accumulate on the filter paper while the sugar and the water solution we can collect in it in a beaker isn't it by this way we can separate the sugar and the wheat flour mixture now let us see the seventh question what is seventh question how would you obtain clear water from the sample of the muddy water how we will get the clear water from the sample of the muddy water we know that mud is insoluble in water so if we will allow this mixture to stand for some time what will happen the sand will settle down at the beaker now by the process of decantation or filtration we can separate the water from the mud what we will do if by the decantation we are separating we will pour the water into the another beaker or if we are using the filtration method we will transfer the solution into the funnel the mud will get accumulated on the filter paper and we will get a clear water solution in the beaker now let us see the next question that is fill in the blanks first question is the method of separating seeds of paddy from its stalk is called how can we separate the seeds from its stalk which method is useful threshing next when milk cooled after boiling is poured onto a piece of cloth the cream is left behind on to it this process of separating cream from the milk is an example of filtration how we can separate the cream from the milk we can filter the solution by this we can get we can separate the cream from the milk next is salt is obtained from the sea water by the process of evaporation we have seen when the water gets evaporated what is left behind is the salt so salt is obtained from the sea water by the process of 
evaporation. Fourth is impurities settled at the bottom. When the muddy water was kept overnight in a bucket, the clear water was then poured off from the top. The process of separation used is the example called decantation. As the water was poured off from the top, this process is known as decantation process. Now question number 9 is true or false. Let's see the first one. A mixture of milk and water can be separated by filtration. Can milk and water be separated by filtration method? No. So this statement is false. Next is a mixture of powdered salt and sugar can be separated by the process of winnowing. Is winnowing method useful to separate salt and sugar powder mixture? No. This is also false. Winnowing is used to separate the substances which are lighter and heavier. So, powdered salt and sugar cannot be separated by winnowing. Third is, separation of sugar from tea can be done with the filtration. Can we separate the sugar from tea by using the filtration method? No. So, this is also false. Grain and husk can be separated with the process of decantation. Is decantation method used to separate grain and husk? No. So this method, is, this statement is false. Let us see the last question. That is, laminate is prepared by mixing lemon juice and sugar in water. You wish to add ice to cool it. Should you add ice to the lemonade before or after dissolving sugar? In which case would it be possible to dissolve more sugar? When we will add the ice? Once we add the sugar, then we will add the ice. So, when the sugar completely get dissolves in the water, after that we can add the ice. I hope this chapter is clear to you. All the methods that we have studied are understood to you.